Hi, welcome back. It's Miss B again, coming to you from my basement. Um, I found this chalkboard that I used to have when I was a kid and I used to play school on it. So I um, thought I would use it for my makeshift classroom. So I'm gonna tell you about an assignment that um, you can do, which is to write your own sonnet. So if you do that, um, the criteria for it are that it has 14 lines like sonnets do. Um, it needs to have the set rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. And it needs to be not necessarily written in iambic pentameter, but to have 10 syllables per line. So those are your three criteria. Um, if you want to, you can submit it for a contest. So send it to me and say that you want it for the contest. And then the winner of the contest will win this really cool Bigfoot lunchbox <laughs> that I found in my basement also while I was cleaning. So I think there's some interesting prizes inside of it too. So this could be yours, all right? So we'll um, decide who the winner is um, by taking all the submissions that want to be in the contest. Um, I'll put them online and then, or I'll put them on Google Classroom and then you guys can vote and we will determine the winner. So there are instructions on how to write your sonnet um, on the assignment that is linked to this video. And also there's a couple challenges. Um, for example, if you want to challenge yourself more, you can write in iambic pentameter. So that's where you have the like, love dub, love dub, like uh, unstressed stress beat uh, in all 10 syllables. Um, I found this little cartoon that I think is kind of funny. It says, so what is iambic pentameter? An ancient form of verse, I'm pretty sure. Ho hum, does it affect my life today? I guess it doesn't, then again, it may. Um, and so if you don't get why that's funny, it's because it's actually written in iambic pentameter. Um, so that's one challenge you can do if you want to give yourself a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little bit more of a challenge, I guess. Um, the other thing you can do is include uh, figurative language. Like this one says, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So there's like a metaphor, right? The woman he's talking about is a summer's day. Okay, so um, that would be one. And then the other thing that you could challenge yourself is to add this thing that's called a turn or a volta. So what that means is that the first part of the sonnet presents some sort of conflict or some sort of question, and the last part of the sonnet um, is some sort of solution or some sort of answer to the question. So the place that it changes from the question to the answer is called the volta or the turn. And so it's either here, like, um, the first four or the first three quatrains um, are the question and the last two lines the rhyming couplet are the answer or it's after the first uh, eight and then it changes so like in um, Shakespeare's sonnet 18 he is saying shall I compare thee or you all the these and thou's are you's and yours shall I compare you to a summer's day you are more lovely and more temperate um, and goes on to compare her to summer um, and then just talks about how she's so beautiful. But then the second part says, but don't worry, okay? Your beauty will not fade. Because as long as there are um, people who can read, then they can read this poem and you'll be remembered through this poem. So the first part talks about her beauty and the second part says, hey, don't worry. Your beauty is eternal. It'll be forever, forever. Okay. So your um, topic for your sonnet can be anything. Like this one is about carrots. When I eat my lunch, these I like to eat, long and orange and good for your sight. Hang on, I can't quite read it. Long and orange and good for your sight spears. Though it is a root, no, it's not a beet. If you feel generous, share with your peers. So that's on carrots. Um, this one is on sonnets. Poetry is like death, much, much destruction. When it is read, thousands of babies cry. It arises from much talk and discussion. When I hear it read, I shoot out my eye. So that's just the first stanza, or the first quadrant. 
This one is about mullets, so clearly someone was being judgy about people's hair. Mullets are like big flowing oceans, hair trailing down from behind you like waves, swaying back and forth with gentle motion. Mullets, they will never be all the rave. Maybe they'll make a comeback, who knows? Anyway, it has a couple um, figurative languages techniques in there, a couple of similes, like big flowing oceans and like waves. So an example of how you could include um, figurative language. So mullets, and then uh, you could write about pretty much anything you want. You could write about the COVID virus if you want. You can make a sonnet about that. So again, your sonnet doesn't have to be entered into the competition, but if you want it entered into the competition, you could win. This beautiful Bigfoot lunchbox won't you be styling next year when you start 10th grade with this. All right, so again, check out the assignment that's online and I will be back again with some more exciting, I can't talk, sorry, more exciting things to tell you about Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet. Bye-bye.